So today I'm going to be explaining how you can lucid dream tonight. Uh, so this won't take long, I'm going to just explain very briefly in this video uh, the things you need to do in order to have a lucid dream tonight. Uh, so hopefully this will sort of skip past the need to uh, practice for weeks on end, uh, go through different techniques. It's just I'm just going to very clearly explain how you can lucid dream tonight, almost without fail. Obviously it will be different for everyone, but this is what you should do. So number one, spend the rest of today uh, depending on what time you read, you're watching this, if you're watching this in the morning then that's ideal, uh, but spend the rest of today learning about lucid dreaming and reading as much as you can. So read articles, read my blog howtolucid.com, watch my videos here, uh, read some online books, I have some books available on Kindle, read articles, just read as much information as you can to get your mind in, you know, in the right mindset to have a lucid dream. You want to immerse yourself in the subject, learn absolutely as much as you can read stories, uh, get inspiration from forums, learn about how other people have experienced lucid dreams and what it's been like for them. Uh, but basically what I'm saying is immerse your mind in lucid dreaming. Make it all you think about for the rest of today. Step two, uh, you're gonna, when you wake up in the morning you're going to need to write down what, you, what happened. Uh, so hopefully you will have a lucid dream but even if you don't and you just have normal dreams you're going to want to write them down in a diary, in a notepad, it can be a book, uh, it can even be a note on your phone, right? You want to write them down. And the reason for that is that going forward, you're going to want to have obviously more lucid dreams, right? You're not just going to want to do it tonight. You're going to want to control your dreams every night. So, well, as close to every night as you can get, three to four times a week, maybe. So get yourself a small notepad and write down in it what you dreamt about, how you felt, what, what happened, that sort of thing. Step three, you're going to want to do what's called the wake back to bed technique, but you're going to slightly modify it. Now let me explain. So as I said, you're going to learn about lucid dreaming tonight uh, by learning as much as you can about it, reading articles, stories uh, before tonight so that you can uh, increase your chances. Then when you actually go to bed, here's what, I'm, here's what I want you to do. I want you to relax as, as deeply as you can. So just don't think about lucid dreaming, and I know this is easier said than done, but just try and relax and uh, get ready for bed in a way that you're not stressing about anything, you're not worried about it, you're not uh, too concerned whether it happens or not. Uh, because a lot of people will think, oh, I have to do this tonight. If I don't, I'm a failure or like it's, it's annoying, I've got to do it, try again the next night, it doesn't work, all this, this nonsense, it doesn't really help you. So just don't stress about it. It probably will happen, but if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You've got, you know, countless other nights to try it. Uh, so yeah, what I want you to do is set an, set an alarm on your phone to go off five hours from the time that when you go to bed. Okay, so set the alarm, make it something soothing. Don't make it like an alarm, a really annoying beeping sound. Just make it something that will wake you up in a relaxed way. Okay, some sort of soothing ocean sounds or something that will definitely wake you up but won't startle you. I hope, hopefully you know what I mean by that. It's not going to annoy you in the morning. A lot of people have these annoying alarm tones and it just sets you up for the day completely wrong. Uh, you're all stressed and yeah, anyway. So set a soothing alarm. When you wake up after five hours, okay, turn the alarm off and then lay back down uh, and don't move any muscles. Now this is quite important and I'm going to make another video about this going into more detail later. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to go back to sleep. Now this is basically the wake back to bed technique, uh, which as the name suggests, involving going to bed, waking up, and then going back to bed. The idea behind that is that when you wake up in the early morning, uh, between 4 and 6 a.m., you're in what's known as your uh, the deepest period of your sleep, where you're more likely to have lucid dreams because your, uh, your REM sleep, rapid eye movement, is the, the biggest then. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. It's basically the sweet spot for lucid dreams and OBEs. You want to make sure that you try to have a lucid dream then, not when you go to sleep because you won't, or it's very unlikely. Okay, This is where a lot of people go wrong. They lay down to go to bed at sort of 10 p.m. and they, they focus on having a lucid dream then, but you haven't had any sleep yet. You know Your body needs to have that deep restorative sleep uh, for a good four to five hours before you can uh, healthily try and have a lucid dream, otherwise you're just going to be making yourself tired, it's very unlikely to happen, uh, and you're just going to get discouraged. So, like I said, five hours of sleep, you wake up, you relax, 
relax all your muscles, don't move, and you're going to go back to sleep. Now, this is the important part. You will get strong urges. So when, when, you, when you lay down, ready to go back to sleep, you're going to get really strong urges to turn over, to roll over, right? The rollover signal, you may have heard this before. Now, what you want to do is completely ignore those urges, okay? So the idea is you're going to keep your mind awake while your body goes into sleep paralysis and shuts down, ready for sleep. The body sends what's known as a rollover signal to your mind to test whether you're actually conscious and awake uh, before it puts you into sleep paralysis. So sleep paralysis is what your body naturally does every night to stop you acting out your dreams physically, right? Uh, and if you awake in the middle of sleep paralysis, it can be scary, right? Because you're not going to be able to move, but your mind is aware and active. You want that as a lucid dreamer. You want to go through sleep paralysis and into a lucid dream. However, firstly, you need to get into sleep paralysis without being asleep. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but here's what you're going to do, okay? When you get the urge, so you've set your alarm, you've woken up at, say, 4 a.m., and you've laid down to go back to sleep. Now, when you do that, you're going to get an urge to roll over at some point between the first five minutes and the first 20 minutes. You're going to get the urge to roll over. Ignore it. Don't move. Don't even move your legs. Don't cross your ankles. Don't touch your stomach. Don't do anything. Just lay there and just relax. Now, it's important that you do relax and you don't stay tense because if you stay tense, you won't fall asleep. If you relax too much and you, you know, roll over and move, you'll fall asleep. You have to keep yourself in the middle of this, the two states, awake and asleep. And you do that by ignoring the rollover uh, signal, the rollover urge. And what's going to happen after that, after about three to four minutes of you ignoring the rollover signal and staying where you are, not moving, you're going to enter sleep paralysis fairly quickly. And what that's going to feel like is there might be like some sort of like pressure that makes it hard to breathe on your chest. Uh, and it can be a bit scary, but just bear in mind that it's natural. It happens to everyone every night. We just normally aren't aware of it. Okay? So it might feel like there's sort of a heavy blanket on you. Don't panic. Lots of people panic. It can be scary. Just ignore it. It will pass in a few minutes, and then you'll be able to enter a lucid dream. And from there, pretty much, it does sort of follow naturally. You know, you enter the sleep paralysis. You might see some colors, shapes. Uh, you've probably experienced before where you're halfway between a, a dream and being awake and you might see sort of flashes of different scenes, different things that you've experienced other, other days, memories. It will all sort of blur into one and it will be like you're, um, you're entering the dream slowly. And all you need, need to do during this stage <clears throat> excuse me, is to relax, let it happen. Uh, don't try and interact with anything straight away. Just sort of watch it and observe it. You might see some colours, shapes let it happen and after a few minutes you'll be in a lucid dream directly and this is probably the best way to have a lucid dream tonight like really fast right now um, because it doesn't involve having to practice reality checks because you're going directly into a lucid dream you're actually bypassing the need to spontaneously become lucid by just not actually falling asleep in the first place I mean obviously you fall asleep at the start but then you wake up and go back to bed so hopefully this has made sense. Um, tips and tricks would be if you, so obviously try this, try this for tonight. Uh, if you find it doesn't work or if it's not working quite right for tomorrow, then do the same thing, but obviously do reality checks throughout the day. So what a reality check is, is where you test whether you're awake or asleep. A good quick reality check is to try and push your finger through your palm. In the dream it will go through, in waking life it won't. So as you're doing this, ask yourself, am I dreaming? And this is that's a reality check, in a nutshell. Do those 10 to 20 times per day, and you're much more likely to have a lucid dream. So that's it, guys. Please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.